Now we pass to the second requirement of worship. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I'm reading now verse 12, "...when thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord." when thou numberest them, that there be no plague among them when thou numberest them. There be no plague among them because they are to be redeemed. This they shall give every one that passeth among them that are numbered half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. A shekel is twenty giras, and half shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. And it was of silver, you see. They shall be ransomed of silver. And silver is the metal of redemption. It's a type of redemption. Everyone had to be redeemed that could worship. Now, we hear a great deal today about public worship. Actually, there's no such thing. Only the redeemed can worship. And we ought to be very careful about that. I can well understand that a great many people going over the band of radio would come to this program and If a man is a Christian, I think he'll be alerted and probably listen. If he's not a Christian, he says, Oh, my gracious, there's another one of those Bible screamers. I won't listen to him. And then he passes over it. Or he may start listening. And if he does, he'll get redeemed. That's the thing we count on. We found out that God will speak to many hearts if they'll listen to the Word of God. Now, when they're redeemed, we can worship God. Then we can meet around the Word of God, but you have to be redeemed. And very frankly, we're not as careful even on this program as we should be. I ask people to support it. But I hope you understand I'm talking to believers. Now, if you're an unbeliever, we're not asking you to give a thing to the program because actually we don't think you can worship God. And giving is an act of worship. And therefore, we trust you'll listen. We are welcome to listen. And even to send for the notes and outlines, we'd love for you to have them. And we believe, if you will, you'll become redeemed, that you will turn to the Lord and be saved. That's the wonder of the wonders of studying the Word of God, friends. Now, not only must they be redeemed, but they must be cleansed. That brings us to the lava. And the lava now is in the outer court, was made of brass, And there are two articles out there, the brazen altar. That's where God settles the sin question. That's where he deals with our sin as sinners. And the laver, brazen laver is out there. And that's where God deals with our sins as saints. Because after all, the saints sin. I've been with them a long time, friends. This idea today that the saints are heavenly, they're not that yet to dwell above with saints in love, that'll be glory. But to stay below with the saints, I know that's another story, friends. Now let's look here, and I'm reading verse 17 of chapter 30 of Exodus. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a lava of brass, and his foot also of brass. Now the foot is a little basin below that they wash their feet in. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister to burnt offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now the priests could not serve unless the first thing they did when they came in the tabernacle, they'd go wash. They got contaminated, you see, on the outside. And every time you go to church, friends, on Sunday, maybe after all it isn't the fact that the preacher's dull. It may be that you're dirty. And when you have a combination, though, of a dull preacher and a dirty saint, you don't have very exciting service, I can tell you that. But the thing we need to do is to remember that you can't worship until you've been cleansed. You and I get dirty in this world. It's the reason the Lord washed the disciples' feet. He's still doing that today, by the way. We need to go to the laver. And that is the first thing they did. Now, if they go into the burnt altar with the sacrifice, they wash before. And afterward, they wash. If they go into the holy place, they wash when they go in. They wash when they come out. And I'm of the opinion that that matter of washing was pretty important. So important that 
I think maybe one priest that came up and washed his hands and turned to the other priest that's there washing his, and he says, Ma, I says, how many times you been up here today? And that fellow says, I've been up here half a dozen times. The other one says, well, I've been up here nearly a dozen times. And look at my hands. I've got dishpan hands. I've washed so much. And I wonder why God wants us to do this. And I suppose Aaron standing in the background would say, well, look here, brethren. I'll tell you why the Lord wants you to watch. He wants you to know you've got to be holy. And you can't worship Him. And you can't serve Him unless you've been cleaned up. This idea today that any dirty saint living in sin, every now and then you hear of some man that gets involved, sometimes a preacher with a woman or some Christian worker with a woman, and they say, my, I don't understand it. He seemed to be such a wonderful servant of God. My friend, if you check his work, you'll find out it is wood, hay, and stubble. God sees to it that it doesn't amount to anything, and there's nothing like that that will make a phony and bring the work of God today into disrepute. Now, this brazen laver, this was the place where the priests wash. We are to come to him today in confession. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it's very important to see this laver of brass It has to do with our sanctification. That's in my book on the tabernacle. That's the thing that I emphasize. It speaks of the sanctification of the believer. And you and I are to go and wash if we're going to serve God. And we go there to wash if we're going to be used of God. It's very important that we be clean. Now, again, we need to not only have the sweet incense in our garments... But we ought to have our bodies washed with pure water. <laughs> the pure water is the Word of God. You know what the laver was made out? Made out of brass. It was made out of the mirrors of the women, that we are told. They brought their mirrors. And they used brass in that day, highly polished brass for mirrors. They didn't have a glass like we have today. And, of course, women haven't changed, and men have neither, down through the centuries. So the women all had mirrors, and they brought those Now, what is it that reveals the sin? It's the Word of God. The Word of God is a mirror. And we're to look into the mirror, the Word of God, and we see that there's a smudge spot on us. What are we to do? And he's washing feet today. The laver also is in heaven. And you go to him if we confess our sins. Now, you don't go to confess publicly. You go to him. That laver's in heaven. And you go to him. And I think every Sunday before you ever go to church, you ought to go in and confess your sins of the week. Now, don't tell me you don't get dirty. I know you do. I get dirty. Your eyes get dirty. Your mind gets dirty. Your hands get dirty. Your feet get dirty. You get dirty. And the trouble in our churches today, even our fundamental churches on Sunday morning, and I'm not being crude when I say this, And one of the reasons that people are not interested in coming there is simply because there's too much spiritual B.O. We need to go to him in confession today. We need to go to that laver and wash today before we go into worship. And God doesn't accept worship until it comes from a cleansed heart, nor will he accept service. That is something that's certainly being proven out 